Hi, I'm going to show you how to create different types of sketches. We're going to start with creating oblique sketches. An oblique sketches use a set of directions, a set of steps, as well as some guidelines that you ought to always follow anytime you're making any type of pictorial. Here's the handout that we use. You can see here the six different steps, as well as some basic understandings of what you ought to always have or use, just keep in the back of your mind. We're going to create a cavalier, and we're going to create a cabinet. Now, cavalier and height and width, it's exactly the same as a cabinet. But the difference is their depth. Cabinet has half depth, cavalier is full depth. Now, this is up to some interpretation, but Basically, it means that anytime you create a cabinet, it should be half as deep as you can create a cavalier. We're going to start in this corner for the cavalier sketch. I'm going to place just a basic point, and I'm going to decide how many units, or in this case, wooden blocks tall is this object. And you can see that I've created a box around the object that they've provided us, and this object is shown in a perspective view, which we'll talk about later but it's easy enough to make a basic box that is also gridded off. And you'll notice that's the sub part of my first step, is to grid the box. I see that there's three wooden blocks tall for this object, and I want to make each wooden block two squares. So one, two, that's one wooden block. Three, four, five, six, be three wooden blocks tall. <clears throat> I connect that together with a straight edge. Hold my pencil nice and loose so that I'm just using the weight of the pencil and pull my entire arm, just my fingers. I don't have a problem with going through the points either. It is, after all, just a construction line. I'll move over the same amount of points needed to go two wooden blocks. One, two. Three, four. Connect that together with a vertical line to a point that is four squares away from the top point. The lines should be so light that I can barely see them. They are, after all, just a construction line. The lighter they are, and notice how I hold the pencil, the easier it is to erase them as well as to delineate them when I want to darken them in. That gives me the front face of the box. Now, from each of these three points, I'll go back two units as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. That should be one, two, three. Connect those together. Be afraid to rotate the paper as opposed to rotating your hand or your straight edge. Remember to sit up, hold the work in front of you, not be cramped over the top of it. I now have the box that this object will fit inside. It's best if I grid this off, in my opinion. And this is also up to interpretation as to whether or not it's a good idea. I prefer it because in the end, I will have created all of the surface faces I need for the second step. However, it does make it a little more challenging for those that have a hard time seeing the construction lines and understanding what they do. I'm not going to delineate every line that I see here. I am simply going to use them as guides. Now my box is gridded. I need to identify what my surface edges are so that I can find the faces. Again, I'll start in this corner, which is right here on my object. I'll go up three. One, two, three. I'll come over one. Back down two. 
and over one again. Down one, and over two. That becomes my front face. Now I'm pressing a little harder. I apply just a little bit of pressure with my finger. Hold my pencil slightly different. I can make a darker lining. I don't want to go back and forth over the object line. I simply want to make one stroke, and if I have to, pick my pencil up and make the line darker. I'll do the same thing repeating for the top and the right side faces. Starting at these two points here, I'll go back to here and here. These two points, I'll go back to these. That's my top face. Delineating, delineating them as I go. Right side face, also very easy to do. Notice that they're just a little bit darker than the construction lines around them. My next step, now that I've delineated all my surface faces, is to do my interior faces and edges and delineating them as I go along. It's a little trickier, especially as the objects get more and more complex. Right now, I can start here here or here. My interior edges will be this edge where the top and right side face intersect with each other and they create an edge. And then there's the back edge of this top face and the back edge of this right side face. Starting here, I can go down and find this point to here. And from that point, I can move back one wooden block or two of my squares to right there. Keeping in mind that I'm now inside the box, not on this outside right edge of the box, but rather inside the box. Just so happens to coincide with that edge. I can move from this point over, and I can move from this point down. I'll draw in some construction lines to identify them. And once I'm happy with hitting my marks, I'll delineate those lines. All that's left now will be the tonal shade. The tonal shading can be tricky, and at first we'll want you to show us that you can tonal shade using crosshatch lines. Later, we can tonal shade using a different method. Anytime I tonal shade, I should think of having one layer and then a three layer. I'm going to make my one layer crosshatch lines on the front. And I'm going to make my profile or right side faces have three layers. I'm going to leave the tops blank for this type of tonal shading. They'll be the lightest spot. This shows me where the light source is. This allows me to see depth to my object. It gives me a separation of the different faces. Because my front face has two dimensions, width and height, then my tonal shade lines should match that. They should only move in the width or height direction. When I apply one layer to the right side or profile, then I would apply a depth or a height line, but not a width line. However, because I'm going to apply three layers to these right side faces, I'm going to apply a width line as well. 
I have to to be able to get the third layer. Most common mistake students make here is applying a layer in a direction that is not parallel to the dimensions. Let me state that again. They apply a line in a direction that is not parallel to one of the three dimensions, height, width, or depth. I'm going to start by applying horizontal lines that run from this corner all the way across, just slightly above this bottom edge. Because my right side face also has this same layer applied to it, because it has three layers, I'm going to carry the line over. The closer these lines are, the darker it will appear. The further apart they are, the less it looks like shading, and the more it looks like you've just applied an edge. Now, in this case, I don't want the top face to have tonal shading, so I'm going to pick my pencil up and pick it back up over here. And I'll keep going. Because this is a right side face right here, I'm going to continue the line through there. And I can see that more as I go up further. And this makes it look more consistent as I go, trying to always stay parallel to the horizontal lines in this case, and later stay parallel to my height and depth lines as I apply those layers. I'm not too worried about going outside of the lines because I can always come back at the end and refine my sketch by erasing any excess or stray marks that I make. After I'm done erasing those, I'll also re-delineate any lines I may have slightly erased. I try to be consistent with the distance I have between them. I'll go in now and oops, I'll go in now and apply my front faces. Don't get this, but I'll go in and apply the height lines to right side faces is what happens when you make a mistake it's a good thing this is just practice all right height lines to my right side faces here here and so forth continuing along making sure I stay as vertical and parallel to my other height lines as possible. And then again in depth. This time, I'm making sure that I'm parallel to the 45 degree lines of depth on the object. Most students will wind up making a mistake with one of these three sets of lines. A common mistake is that they move at an angle like this. Now that angle is not correct and does not follow the depth dimension. It's close, but it's not quite there. It also doesn't follow the width, and it doesn't follow the height dimension. Try not to make that mistake. If you do, you wind up having to, on an activity sheet, erase those uh, faces that have that type of tonal shape. All right, so in the end, I'm pretty much done. I might would clean up a little bit of this tonal shade down here and on the side, maybe a little bit here and here, and anywhere that I feel like I need to redelineate an edge, I would do so. I might would redelineate this edge slightly but it looks fairly good in real life. Now that completes my cavalier. The next thing I would do is a cabinet.